Hi folks, my name's Chris and I'm a lecturer in drama at the University of Queensland. I'm an expert in Australian theatre and cultural history and I also teach mainly into our first year courses, so if you do end up studying with us, chances are you'll be working with me. In this clip, I want to introduce two skills that we see as core to studying drama, imagination and empathy and to argue that they can help you in your career because they allow you to start to understand the lives of others. So to begin, I want you to imagine this. You get home from school today, you're ready for a break, you turn on the TV, you really just want to watch The Chase and watch that governess rip some poor idiot to shreds. But what you see though, and one of the downsides to watching The Chase perhaps, is that you get to see all the promos for the news immediately afterwards. So you get this little blaring headline that takes up half the screen and it says, Local mother murders kids in sick revenge plot. Now she's on the run. And you think, wow, gosh, that woman sounds like she's lost it. But I'm going to tune into that. I'm going to hear about how disgusting that woman who murdered her kids as part of this horrible revenge plot to get back at her husband is. You're hooked, right? Mainly or partly perhaps because of the extremity. We're drawn to these kinds of excesses after all. We enjoy indulging in feelings that seem to be a little bit too big for everyday life. So as some of you recognise, that grab local mother murders kids in sick revenge plot, is a summary of the ancient Greek dramatist Euripides' play Medea. It's one you might have come across. Now, Medea is an extraordinarily challenging play to the contemporary artist for a lot of reasons, but primarily amongst them is that the heroine of the play, the main character, is a woman who, now this is a spoiler, in the final moments of the play murders her two children in order to take revenge on her husband. And that's already having murdered his new wife and the new wife's father as part of the plot. Incidentally, the murder of the new wife is a particularly gross one. She gives the wife a poisoned dress that comes to life and literally consumes her. And the wife's father comes in and says, oh no, that, that dress is consuming you. I better get it off you. And of course, it then devours him as well. So the challenge to anyone that sets out to stage a play like Medea today is how do you make this woman the heroine of a play? How do you get an audience to go, wow, I really feel for that woman, given that you know an hour and 20 minutes into an hour and a half long play, she's going to do something pretty awful to characters that we care about. One of the things that you'll notice as you read the play more closely or as you read more about the history around the play is that Medea had a really tough life. Medea is what we would call these days an immigrant. She's someone who has been taken or fled from her homeland, and she's been taken to a more civilised part of the world, or part of the world that's perceived to be more civilised, perhaps. She grew up in a city on the far side of the Black Sea, basically as far away as it was possible to imagine at the time, and she ends up in ancient Greece. The people there, in a place called Corinth, said, well, you're a barbarian, you're hideous, you're a monster, just look at you, you're brown. She was constantly subjected to what we might think of in modern terms as racism, because she was not seen as a suitable wife for Jason, the hero of the town, because she wasn't from Corinth. Added to that, she's been taken away from the only life that she knew growing up in this other place. She's been put in this new environment, and literally, almost as soon as a better offer comes along, her husband ditches her for a newer, younger, more politically attractive model. He goes off and marries the daughter of the king, although, as we just talked about, that's not going to end so well. So there are all of these forces that are pushing back against Medea. And one of the skills that an actor, or anyone who's engaging with the text as a drama student, needs to be able to have is to say, well, how do we make an audience care? How do we make an audience use their imagination to think themselves into the mind of Medea and start to feel for her and start in particular to feel empathy? 
Empathy is distinct from sympathy. It means that you can imagine that person's position in the world. You can imagine yourself into their understanding of the world. And that's the real skill that a performer needs to have, that an artist needs to have, that a student writing about the play needs to have, that a student staging the play needs to have. To be able to communicate to an audience. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that some high-profile artists around the world, one British and one Australian, have gone about doing that. And to start you off, here's the great British actor Kate Fleetwood in a production for the Almeida Theatre in London. Let the brakes off. Down we go. So fast I was afraid knowing that if he lost control, I'd be done for. Marriage. It's a game of trust, yeah. a game that goes on and on until it becomes your life. You trust the sun will rise tomorrow. You never consider that it won't. But trust is like a pane of glass when it's clean. Hardly know it's there. But you smash it and you cut to shreds. Cold comes in. One day, my husband said to me, have you forgotten? This is only a game, remember? I'm just a man and you're just a woman and this was a game we played for a while. Wasn't it? So, having watched that clip, what I'd encourage you to do is think about all of the ways in which the text and the actor performing the text are trying to activate your imagination to create a sense of empathy for Medea at this moment. After all, the big crime of the play is just around the corner, and I'd suggest to you that what you're seeing there is an actor using all of their formidable skills to try and create a sense that maybe, just maybe, this response might be reasonable and inviting you to think if you were in Medea's position, if all of the things that have happened to Medea both in and outside the world of the play had happened to you, there's a chance that you might have responded in the same way. To bring that point home, I'm going to show you now another short clip of a different version of Medea. This comes from an Australian version of the text by the playwright Kate Mulvaney and director Anne-Louise Sachs, and you'll see one of our second year drama students, Leah, performing Medea's final monologue from that text. And what I'd encourage you to do as you watch it is think about those same questions. How is this text and how is this performer attempting to activate our imagination and inviting us to feel a sense of empathy for Medea at this moment? Boys. Sometimes when I look at you, I get so scared. I see everything that's coming, you see, and, and I love you. I love you both. I scream it into my pillow every night how much I love you. I scream so hard at the universe that I'll bet there's cavemen from millions of years ago that saw what they're doing and say, did you hear that? And I scream so hard that robots of thousands of years from now will say, listen, there was a mother who loved her children more than anything in the history of the universe. Just in case the universe and everyone that's been here and everyone that's coming to it doesn't hear me scream it, I want you to know that. So what you've just heard is the last thing that she says to them before she kills them. So again, it's complicated, right? You have this woman to whom you want to say, I feel for you. I want to understand you. But on the other hand, you have this history of violence. We often forget that when she was fleeing her homeland, Medea killed her brother and 
cut him into little pieces and threw the pieces overboard from the boat to try and slow down the people that were following her. So she's not exactly innocent. And yet, think about what you've just heard. Think about the way those actors have tried to make you feel for her. And that's the complicated thing. That's what drama is about teaching you. Drama is about saying, wherever you end up in your life, whatever it is you're doing, you need to be able to imagine yourself into other people's lives. Because that makes you a more empathetic human being. And that makes you a more effective whatever it is that you're doing. If you're a teacher, you need to be able to imagine yourself into the lives of your students, or you're not going to be able to communicate with them effectively. If you're a manager, you need to be able to imagine yourself into the position of the people that you're managing, and so on and so on. It is, after all, no coincidence that UQ drama graduates include not only actors like Jeffrey Rush and Anna McGann, who've won an Oscar and a Logie, but also Anastasia Palaszczuk, who's the current Queensland Premier, and Anna Bly, one of her predecessors as Premier. And that's because both actors and state premiers, not to mention everyone in between, have to be really, really good at empathy, at feeling for other people. They have to be really, really good at imagination, at understanding what other people are going through. And this is a core concept that's at the heart of all theatrical practice, after all, especially compared to other art forms. It takes place in a shared time, in a shared space. It's live. It most often happens right here, right now. It's not a film. It's not replayed. It's not an artwork. It's not on the wall. It's happening in real time and real space. And it asks its audience to look at something before their very eyes. By forcing an audience to spend time with Medea, to look at her, to look her in the eye, Euripides is inviting that audience to understand her, or at the very least, to engage with her view and experience of the world before judging her. To use the words of the novelist Hanya Yanagihara, all literature and art ask the same question. What does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be alive? Can't art, and shouldn't art, encourage us to imagine the human condition, even at, especially at, its cruelest and smallest? And later in that same speech, which is about the ethical obligations an artist has to her audience, she goes on to say this. But the best that one human can do for another is sometimes the ultimate human act is to witness to open our eyes wider and look at what we would rather not, to regard what we think we cannot endure. When we give up seeing, we give up something greater. Once we start limiting what we can tolerate in literature, in art, we also start limiting our ability to see our fellow human. So to conclude, theatre makers, therefore, make use of these possibilities of the art form in order to make us care, in order to make us feel, and to make us see where we otherwise wouldn't. Yanagihara suggests that it's in this looking into the faces of others, in taking some kind of responsibility for them, that we're able to make discoveries about ourselves. With every encounter with the other, we're able to make discoveries about ourselves. So when we talk about drama, we're talking about creating a better world through fostering the imagination and the empathy needed to imagine yourself into the lives of others. Whether that's as an actor preparing for the role of a lifetime as Medea, as a playwright working on your breakthrough play, a criminal lawyer representing a vilified defendant, a bank manager deciding on a loan application, and onwards and onwards. All of these careers, independent of and beyond the field of cultural production, are reliant on being able to engage with the lives of others through imagination and empathy.